Hey everyone, so today we're going to calculate correlation on stock returns. So just like we did in our last video, we're going to be pulling our data from Quando. And today we're going to be looking at two tickers, Tesla and ExxonMobil, and we're going to be looking at the 2017 to 2018 time period. The data frame that we're going to be looking at is called DF, and it's just the daily percentage returns of these two securities. So let's calculate correlation. So the good thing is we've actually calculated and understood the components, all the components necessary in calculating correlation. We looked at variance, and remember that was a measurement of dispersion around some expected value. We then looked at standard deviation, which was expressed in the same units as the observed values. We finally looked at covariance, which was a relationship between two types of variables. Correlation is very similar to covariance. We're finding a relationship between two variables. It's just a little more intuitive, and we usually measure it from negative one to one. So a correlation of one means that there's a positive relationship between two types of variables. A correlation of negative one is there an, there's an inverse negative relationship. And finally, a correlation of zero means there's no relationship. So let's dive in here and look at this. So correlation always, all we're doing is we're taking the covariance between the two types of variables, to asset returns, divided by the product of their standard deviations. So let's calculate this. So all we need to do is first we need to calculate the variance. And we're going to calculate the variance of Tesla. And remember, that's just equal to our data frame. And we're going to look at our Tesla column. And we can just apply the dot var function. There we go. We have the variance of Tesla. Now we need to find the variance of ExxonMobil. And we can just say that by taking the ExxonMobil column and applying the dot variance function, like so. And there's the variance of ExxonMobil. Then we need to find the standard deviation, and we can just take the square root of these variances. But actually, in Python, there's an easier way to do that. All we can do is we'll just call this first standard deviation of Tesla. And we can just take our data frame Tesla column and apply the standard deviation function on that, like so. And there's our standard deviation of Tesla. Again, we can find the standard deviation of ExxonMobil in the same way. And so we'll find Exxon Mobile column. And there's our standard deviation of Exxon Mobile. We now have the denominator in our correlation function. We need to find the covariance now. So to do that, we can just take the covariance of Tesla and apply the dot covariance function, that's COV, on the covariance of Exxon Mobile. And there's our covariance. So we have the numerator and the denominator. All we need to do now is just divide them. So we'll take this, do it on the same line, divided by the standard deviation of Tesla, multiplied by the standard deviation of ExxonMobil. And there's our correlation. So of course, there's always an easier way to do this in Python. We can just use the, the find the data frame Take the data frame of Tesla and use the dot core function, similar to how we use covariance, and apply it to Exxon Mobil column. Run that. We should get the same, very similar value, and we do get the same value. So that is correlation. If you like this video, please subscribe. In our next videos, we're going to look at all these subcomponents that we talked about: variance, um, correlation, covariance, and how it builds out into understanding total portfolio variance and eventually building an optimal portfolio. So till next time, thank you.